Today we're doing the final way to solve these systems of equations, and it's called elimination. So, you can do substitution on anything, but sometimes that requires a lot of work. Like if you look at number two, we would have to take one of these equations and get x or y by itself in order to solve it. So like, don't write this. But let's say we took that first equation, and we were like, hey, let's get x by itself. So first you'd have to add the 6y to the other side. And then you'd have to divide everything by 2. So you'd get x equals 3y plus 2. And then you would do substitution. And this would replace the x in the other equation. So you'd have 2 of those, 3y plus 2 minus 11y equals negative 16. There's an agent running right now. I don't even know what that means. We start distributing. That would give us 6y plus 4 minus 11y equals negative 16. You combine your like terms. That would give us negative 5y plus 4 equals negative 16. You're like, oh, Mr. Plant, we should probably subtract the 4. Negative 5y equals negative 20. Divide it by negative 5, and you get y equals positive 4. Now we still need to find x, so you can substitute it into any of the equations. Let's say I went with this 3y plus 2. x equals 3 times y, 4, plus 2. That would give us 12 plus 2, which is 14. So our coordinate would be 14, 4. Now again, I hope you didn't write that, because I said don't write that. We're going to probably get that same answer a different way, but look how much work that took. And it's possible. We could do it. But there is another way to avoid having to do a lot of that work. This elimination is nice. If you look at example one, we don't have to adjust everything. If we were to instead add straight down 3x plus 7x is 10x, 5y plus negative 5y is nothing. It's zero. It's almost as if the y's have been eliminated. Ooh. And then negative 19 plus 39 is 20. 10x equals 20. We're one step away from knowing x. So we can divide both sides by 10. x equals 2. We already have half of our coordinate. Now we need the y. So we can use either equation. Let's say I use the first one. 3x, 3 times 2, plus 5y equals negative 19. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 5y equals negative 19. We'll go ahead and subtract the 6. 5y equals negative 25. And then we just have to divide it by 5. And we get y equals negative 5. So writing that then as a coordinate, our x was 2. Our y was negative 5. That would be, if we were to graph those two equations, they're going to intersect each other at 2, negative 5. Great. So again, elimination works great if you have the x and y on both sides, or on the same side in both equations. Now, it worked out nicely that we had the positive 5y and the negative 5y, because if we add them together, it's 0. That's not always going to happen for us, but we can always force it to happen. If you look at the second one, we have 2x and 2x. If we add those together, though, that would be positive 4x. We're trying to eliminate it. So all we have to do is alter one of the equations. We can alter it however we want. As long as we're multiplying the entire equation by the same number, we're good. So we could multiply by negative 1, which just makes everything the opposite. So pick one line, and multiplying by negative 1, just change everything. I'm going to change the second equation. Negative 2x plus 11y equals positive 16. That's multiplying that equation by negative 1. Now if we go straight down, 2x minus 2x, eliminated. Negative 6y plus 11y is 5y, and 4 plus 16 is 20. Divide by 5, 
y equals 4. We have to figure out x. You can use the original two equations, or you can use the one after we changed it. I'm going to go with the original number one equation, the 2x minus 6y. 2x minus 6 times 4 equals 4. Now 6 times 4 is 24, so 2x minus 24 equals 4. You add the 24 to the other side. 2x equals 28, and then divide by 2. x equals 14. Holy cow, look at that. The same coordinate we got the other way. I will argue the math we did this way significantly easier than the math we did the first way. Both ways are possible. This way worked out easier because of how this problem was set up. You can always force them to match up. But remember, we do want one of them to be positive and one to be negative so they cancel out. So if you look at example three, neither one match up. They're not even the same numbers. But we can multiply. If you want, you can get the 9 and 10 to match up. But you'd have to multiply both of them. Like, what's a number 9 and 10 could go into? 90. You could make them both 90y. That would require you to multiply the top equation by 10, the bottom equation by 9. And that works. However, if you look at the x's, 4 can go into 12. So we could just get away with multiplying the first equation by 3. But you've got to multiply everything in the equation by 3. So if we did 3 times this whole line, it'd be 12x minus 27y equals 12. I'm going to rewrite the second equation right underneath this. Negative 12x plus 10y equals 56. So now our x's are going to cancel out. Our y is negative 27 plus 10 is negative 17y. And then 12 plus 56 is 68. So simple step, divide by negative 17, and we get y equals negative 4. You still got to find x. You can use the original 2. You can even use the new equations. I usually go with the original 2 just because they're usually, well, they are smaller numbers. Unless you're dealing with decimals or, per, or fractions. But we really don't have to deal with that. So I'm going to go with the first equation, 4x minus 9y, negative 4, equals 4. Now negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. We're going to subtract the 36. 4x equals negative 32. And then we'll divide by 4 to get x equals negative 8. We write it as a coordinate, x, y, negative 8, negative 4. If we were to graph these two equations, they would intersect at negative 8, negative 4. Now again, pause on the writing for number 4. I just want to show you something. If you cannot think of what they both go into, you could always take the numbers in front, in this case the 4 and 6, and just flip them. Do the top by 4 bottom by 6. That would make them both 24x. And you want one to be negative, so you could just be like, negative 6. That works. You can also do that with the y's. You could do the top equation by 8, the bottom equation by 12, and again, you want one of them to be negative. That works too. And that can work every single time. Now, we said 6 times 4 was 24. There is a smaller number that 6 and 4 go into, and that's 12. So we could also make them 12x. That's what I wanted to show you. So here's where I would click back in and start writing. To make this 6x 12x, you would multiply by 2. To make 4x 12x, you would multiply by 3. We do want one of them to be positive, one to be negative. They're both currently positive. There's an easy fix for that. That's it. So top line times 2 would be 12x plus 24y equals 22. The second equation by negative 3 would be negative 12x, negative 24y, and positive 15. So if we were to go straight down, 12x minus 12x, gone. 
24y minus 24y also gone. We have nothing left on the left side. The right side, 22 plus 15 is 37. Does 0 equal 37? No. So thinking of our special cases, no solution or IMS, 0 does not equal 37. So that would be the no solution. If all your variables cancel out and you're left with something not true, no solution. If it comes out to 0 equals 0 or 8 equals 8, that would be your IMS if that does happen. And it happens from time to time. <laughs>